Hey, good morning everyone, or whatever time you're watching this video. It's a great day to be out on the water. I think every time you can get out is a great day, but especially when it's pretty mornings like this. Y'all, so we just made it to our fishing spot. It is a public reef put out by the state to enhance all this sandy, boring bottom. They put out structures out here and it really attracts fish certain times of year. It can be difficult to fish though. It is a gorgeous day in beautiful Orange Beach, Alabama. Windy, so you can't go offshore, but you can still find other opportunities to fish. And y'all sit back, relax, and let's get into some fishing. So we have the trolling motor in spot lock anchor mode and I'm throwing a Z-Man trout trick. It is a simple lure that I've been using for years and it seems to just get the job done. I love simple stuff. This is in bad shad, and I have it on a 3 16 ounce jig head with 20 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon leader. Now I'm throwing this on a 3000 size Daiwa with 15 pound braid and a seven and a half foot medium heavy fast action rod. The only thing I really do to the Z-Man is add some scent to it, and this is mullet pro gear. All righty, let's get it out. Now it's 10 to 15 feet deep, right where we're fishing. And there's some structure down there a lot of rock and rubble so you can get hung up but what i like to do is let that lure fall down to the bottom reel in my slack give it a sharp twitch fall down to the bottom reel in slack sharp twitch every now and then you can do a little double twitch but it's as simple and easy as that hopefully we can get a bite here i'm gonna fan cast around and see if we can actually put something in our cooler just like that oh man there we go <laughs> that's a nice one yeah buddy that's a nice fish get in here speckled trout yeah that's what i'm talking about i love when a plan pays off yeah oh man because Lord knows it doesn't always. Let's uh, show you to the camera. Yeah, that is a nice spotted sea trout, speckled trout, speck. You may call it something different, but they're actually a drum. They're related to redfish, but they're called spotted sea trout or speckled trout. Look at that Z-Man trout trick right in the uh, corner of the mouth. I guess it tricked this trout, <laughs> pun intended. But y'all, that's a perfect size one. But we're gonna take this lure out and put some more procure on there Ooh, and throw that feisty joker in the cooler that's awesome so we're going to readjust our lure see i'm not sponsored by z-man i thoroughly enjoy using them though the reason i like using them is because of how durable they are and the action imparted by this elastec plastic i mean look at that that thing stretches out like two feet long retains its shape and you can catch multiple fish on the same lure but anyway let's go ahead and put some more procure on there and speaking of sponsors, I do want to thank Mossy Oak. I'm wearing their hoodie. It's nice and cold this morning. I've been wearing a lot of their hunting clothes this past week trying to get a deer. And so I want to thank them. You can save money on mossyoak.com on their store by using promo code BAMA20. And I appreciate them being part of the channel. And let's get another cast out. This time of year, these speckled trout can school up pretty good. So I know I caught it in that direction. I'm gonna cast right back in that direction again. They're down pretty close, if not on the bottom, just trying to stay warm. Oh, oh, oh one hit it as soon as it fell down. Oh man, that's where the braided line really comes in handy because you can feel everything that's happening. There's one. Y'all, that was chaotic just now, but it proved my point that there's a nice school there. Oh, that's a flounder. Oh no. <laughs> This thing's funny. Y'all got to see this. Y'all, that is a puffer fish. Check him out. As you can see why they call a puffer fish. Look at that. That is so funny. You can eat these. There's a special way of preparing them, but I just think they're amazing and really cool. So I don't like to kill them. I like to toss them back. They have some serious munchers on them. You do not want to stick your finger in their mouth, just like most fish. But as you can see, that's why they call them puffer fish. If you didn't know, they puff themselves up big 
to make themselves larger so they can scare off some would-be predators and also if they get swallowed they puff themselves up to try not to go down the throat of any fish dolphins like the bottlenose dolphin will sit there and play with them it's funny but that is a puffer fish how cool is that <laughs> let's let them go y'all that's so funny all right mrs puff go back and teach some driving school if you know what i mean y'all spongebob fans all right he's gonna deflate and there he goes i think that's like one of the coolest things ever no matter how many times i catch him or i'm out here there's always something to enjoy and see and it never gets old seeing awesome wildlife like that that was cool Oh, oh, see, that's what you want to do is set that hook. And that's another nice speckled trout, and that's why you do it. Yeah, man. You definitely, that's why I love this type of fishing, because it's just like bass fishing. That's a good one. Another nice spotted sea trout or speck on the trout trick. That's about the same size as the other one. That's a great fish. I love, they thump that lure so hard. See, and so you get that good hook set in them so you don't lose that fish. But there we go. This one's gonna go in the cooler with our other one. And we actually have something to take home and we can cook up. See why they're called a whole yellow mouths? A lot of yellow mouth in them. And a lot of that can be from the uh, iodine and the shrimp that they eat. So what I've always thought is that yellow Iodine colors yellow. Shrimp has a lot of iodine in it in the heads, and that's where they get that yellow mouth from. He's going to go in our cooler. Sweet. These wintertime speckled trout have such a great meat to them as well. They taste good. It's typically not a lot of worms in them this time of year because they're coming out of pretty cold water, but they still fight hard. Like they're not super lethargic in a sense. I mean, where they're sitting, they are, but once you try to pull them away from their home, they have some umph to them. They like to fight. Yep, there's another one. You feel that thump in the line and you know you're got something on there. Oh, another nice one. Boat flip him carefully. This one's got some shoulders to him. That's a good one. Ha, how amazing is that? I mean, you couldn't ask for any better hook set than that. Perfectly in the top of their mouth. That wasn't coming out easy at all. Oh, there we go. And that one has some nice shoulders to it. And you can look at their bellies a lot of times to let you know if they're sitting on the bottom. These, they're not quite hugged super tight to the bottom, so they could be just suspended just a little bit. The sun probably has them up starting to eat. Obviously, they're hungry. But a lot of times, I'll pull them out of here, and they'll be completely red just from sitting right down in the bottom on those super cold days. But that's another nice yellow mouth. <laughs> Spotted sea trout, speck. What a great fish. Man, I just enjoy it. This is so fun. And you don't have to have a boat to catch these. You don't have to have a, a kayak and a boat does help, but you can catch these speckled trout pretty much anywhere. There's saltwater, brackish creeks, lagoons, docks. They're very structure oriented fish. You can get reaction strikes from them as well. If they're not quite hungry, you bounce something like this in front of their face enough, they're gonna hit it just out of pure anger. Oh like that oh man i should have checked that leader it broke me off that's another uh real life lesson right there <laughs> always check your leader after each bite so this is what i'm using there's a pearl blue glimmer and then right now it's a bad shad it's probably my favorite color of all time just because it looks just like a mullet and a standard bait fish that swims out here something with a dark back silver bottom contrasts really well no matter what color water no matter what condition sky now these z-mans can be a turnoff for some if you storm incorrectly you want to keep them in the same bag although the plastic is extremely durable 
it can react with your other plastics. So I always keep them in the original bag they come with. And then since they are stretchy, they can be tough to rig up. That's why the iStrike jig heads are really good because they're designed for this. They have these little hook keepers. So take your trout trick, hook it, you know, just a couple rings, like a quarter inch down. Bring it up on the hook point. Don't be afraid to stretch it out. Turn it. And now you want to see where the hook point's going to lay for it to be straight. If it's all curly or scrunched up, it's going to spin on the way down and not look very natural. So I know the hook point's coming out there. Poke it all the way through and you're good to go. If you, uh, you know, Texas rigging on other soft plastics, you can kind of hide the hook point by backing it up and burying it. If you do it on Z-Mans, you're gonna miss a lot of bites because this is so stretchy. We'll throw some more mullet pro cure on this one and we're ready to go again. Hopefully you can take something away with that rigging session. Since this plastic's super stretchy, it definitely requires a little bit of patience and just a little bit different technique to rig it up on a hook. Once you do it a couple times, you can rig it up with your eyes closed. Yep, there he is again. That's gotta be another speckled trout and it is. You can see that yellow mouth and their very dark top of their body. Oh, wow. Silvery sides. What a great fighting fish. I mean, when they're on, they are on. That is incredible. This is our fourth speckled trout on the trout trick the artificial i mean it doesn't really get any better fishing than that i love their little snaggle too some of them have the two fangs up there but a lot of them just have that one because the other one broke off but that's how they hold on to bait fish i do want to say it's 10 20 right now about mid-morning the sun came up and it can get these fish active after a cold front where it's real cold overnight they sit down on the bottom let the water warm up some and they'll start biting pretty good so we have four speckled trout in the fish box in just a very short period of time i fished a bunch of other places this morning with not a single bite decided to make a move and it's paid off oh wow that one feels good i mean they all do but oh there's one right below it as well oh no I didn't think I had a fish at first. I thought it was the bottom. That one was a stud, but aren't all the ones that you lose big? But he had one falling behind of it. So at least I know that school's pretty big. I'm gonna cast back out there again. That felt like I was pulling up the bottom. There you are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Knew he'd come back for it. They usually do if you leave it sitting down there. Oh man, come on. Gotta keep it tight and get you in the boat. Yes. If you let them come up and shake their head too much, that lure will come out of their mouth just like it did in the boat. Just another fresh, nice and cold speckled trout. So see why they call them spotted sea trout? All them spots on them. Man, these things are awesome. A good old trout trick, putting in some work this morning. It definitely tricked those five trout. See if it can trick the sixth one. But I'm just bouncing this back down on the bottom again. Hopefully get one more thump. And we can call it a morning. Oh, there's a bite. Yep. There you are. If we can get this in the boat, we'll have a limit. Come on, nice and swing it. Boom, immediately I cast out. I mean, there's not a lot of editing in this video, which is nice. Sometimes I make a thousand casts, but just now it's almost like every cast. So there we go. That's our spotted sea trout limit for Alabama. Six fish a person per day. And these are all slot fish. They're in the same school, just hungry, aggressive. They all, I'm gonna throw this one on ice and make my way back to the boat ramp. We just got back from the fish market, AKA 
my boat <laughs> with our limit of speckled trout. It is time to, we're gonna fillet these up and make some uh, fish tacos up in the house. I haven't made fish tacos in a while. I've been craving them for a little bit and so that's what we're gonna make. So I have my seven inch sword flex fillet, but I'm gonna show you how I like to fillet these up. They're very easy. And it's a nice change of pace from sheep's head. Wintertime trout fishing is one of my favorite things to do. Nice, easy cut. And look how thick that meat is on these fillets. So I like to rotate the knife and go straight down through their scales all the way to their tail. Boom, just like that. Don't be afraid to clean those scales off your knife. It's hard to cut through things with your scales on there. Then we're just gonna fillet these right off the bone. Easy, they have thin skin, makes them simple to fillet, thin pin bones. Makes it easy to cut through. Boom, go around that rib cage and the stomach lining. Look how easy that is. A little bit different animal than sheep's head. <laughs> so I wanna take the skin off. And now they do have thin skin, so you have to be careful if you wanna get all the skin off not to cut through. Careful, just aiming our knife parallel to the cutting board and checking, make sure we haven't cut through. See how you can check? Once you cut through, it's kinda hard to come back up. Boom, just like that. We have got the skin off. Trim up some of that belly meat and look how clean that fillet is. Nice white meat. They have some pin bones in there. You wanna make sure you get out. And there's one fillet of speckled trout or spotted sea trout ready to go up in our fridge and then get ready to be cooked. Y'all, we have made it in the kitchen and I cannot wait to share this recipe with you. We are making fish tacos out of our gorgeous, fresh speckled trout. Look at those fillets, they're nice cleaned up. So I have the oven ready at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Our fish taco sauce, this is the main kit and caboodle of the dish, these are delicious. Have some sour cream, mayonnaise, half and half cream, chopped cilantro, serrano chilies, garlic powder, paprika, and cumin powder. A whole lime, a little bit of salt in there, and a little bit of black pepper to taste. I've already put my mayonnaise and sour cream and half and half in the bowl, and we have to add the rest of our ingredients. Now for our fish, you can use any type of seasoning that you like, but I have some paprika, garlic powder, cumin powder, salt, pepper, oregano, and a little bit of thyme. That's a great mix of spices. Gonna give that fish some nice flavor. So I have some melted butter, and that's what we're gonna use to base our speckled trout. Let's put our spices in there and get these mixed up. Y'all, if you could just smell this on its own, it smells amazing. And you know when it smells good before you even start cooking, that's when you should know the dish is gonna taste amazing as well. I have put down some extra version olive oil on the bottom side just so they don't stick. And all we're gonna do is take our butter spice mix and cover this sucker up. Woo -hoo, look at the color it's getting already. That butter and the paprika in there is gonna give it a nice flavor and also a great color. And I'm only doing one side. And then the rest of the spices are gonna just give it some amazing flavor. That should go well in tacos. 375 degrees Fahrenheit in our oven on bake. These are fairly thin fillets. It should only take about 15 to 20 minutes. If you have some thicker fish, like red fish, where sheep said it may take a little longer. Oh, now it's time to make our fish taco sauce. This is a quick and easy dish. It may seem like a lot of ingredients, but it's really not. And if uh, you can always go and pause it, I put the measurements right in front of the ingredients. So you know, you just pause the video and you can see if you wanna make this yourself. But I've already mixed, like I said, the cream, the mayonnaise, the sour cream, salt and pepper in there. Let's put our whole lime. Got a nice little juicer. So we don't get any seeds in there. Lime is the star of this dish here. Some fresh citrus always goes well with tacos. Boom, there we go. One whole lime. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up a little bit just to get a better mixture so it's not spilling everywhere. We got that mixed up. Let's add our rest of our ingredients. Here goes our garlic powder. 
A little bit goes a long way. Paprika, regular. You can use smoked if you like as well. And cumin powder. Go ahead and get this mixed up. I decided to grab a fork. It breaks up that sour cream a little bit more. Now time to add our serrano chilies. If you like jalapeno or habanero, you can add that instead. I love the flavor of serrano. And then chopped cilantro. And each of these are all optional ingredients. You know, if you don't like one thing or if you're allergic or something, substitute it or leave it out. It's up to you. That's a fun thing about cooking. Now it's time to mix this up and we'll cover it and throw it in the fridge and this will be our fish taco sauce. Let me give it a taste real quick. We'll throw that fork in the sink when we're done. Oh man, that's good. Just gonna get covered up and go in the fridge. Y'all, we're gonna shallow fry our white corn tortillas. This only takes like 10 to 15 seconds. It's bam, bam. You wanna be very careful, obviously. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds at 350 degrees. Get that nice and folded. Just gotta hold it there for a few seconds and it'll retain its shape, especially once it cools down. Let the oil drain and set them on the plate. Now that's, we're gonna do that for a few more taco shells. Let's take our fish out. Wow, that looks amazing. And they are nice and cooked. Let's see all crispy on the edges. If you need to make sure if they're cooked all the way, you can always take a fork and open them up in the middle. But we're gonna set them on some of these homemade pot holders that one of y'all awesome viewers sent me for Christmas. And also, I've sent out a lot of Christmas cards as well, and I'm about to do a video on going over all the ones that were sent. So that was cool. And you can fry them to your desire. See that? Still soft and pliable so they don't break, but they'll have a nice crispy crunch to them. Also, our fish is ready. Taco shells are ready. And our toppings. Well, like I've said plenty of times before, cooking is fun, everybody's different, that's what makes us all human. If you don't like one certain ingredient, you can leave it out or switch it up. But for our toppings, with our fish and our tacos, chopped serrano chili, chopped cilantro, a chopped red onion, slice of lime, and crumbled goat cheese. You can also use cotilla cheese as well but I really love the creaminess and flavor you get from the goat cheese. Let's put our tacos together. Have our shell. We'll take some of this fish. Obviously, you're not gonna put a whole filet in there. Cooked perfectly, peels right off, and it makes for a great taco. I love these Serrano chilies. They're spicy to an extent, but they just have such great flavor. If you don't want as much spice, you can put some bell peppers, or you can just leave them out. Cilantro and onion, so red onion. I like the red onion with fish. I like white onion with red meat. Now it's time for our cilantro. Squeeze that lime on there. These are nice and juicy limes too. Look at that. A lot of nice fresh citrus. It's homemade fish taco sauce. We're gonna drizzle that on. And I love the flavor of that. So I want them coated good. All right, we have our fish taco sauce on there. Last but not least, our crumbled goat cheese. This is a very tasty cheese. If you want to use the crumbled cotilla, you can. And there's our deluxe fish tacos straight from the Alabama water to our cleaning table and then to the kitchen. Look at that. Does that not look delicious? Let's give one a try and I'll let you go so you can get out there and do the same thing. Y'all, we have our fresh fish tacos, some Jaritos Mandarin, but let's taste some of these homemade fish tacos. Mmm. Mmm. I have it all over my mouth. That's when you know it's good. I've made a bunch of stuff on the channel, and the way these ingredients work together has definitely moved on up there and one of my favorite things to eat. That is phenomenal. I don't think you can get any better than that. Even my dog is begging for him, <laughs> and he's pretty picky. Y'all, I hate to let you go. Don't forget to go check out all of our partners and sponsors down below, including Mossy Oak. I wear a lot of their apparel out fishing and hunting. You can save 20% off on the Mossy Oak store with promo code BAMA20, along with all the other partners of the channel linked below. I appreciate everyone that has sent Christmas cards 
and gifts to the P.O. Box. On our next video, I'm going to include all those in there as a thank you for sending those out. And I hope you have received yours by now. If not, you have. if you sent a card, you got one back from me. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, go smash that subscribe button down below. I appreciate each one of you that have already subscribed. Drop a like and comment if you like fish tacos like this or what your favorite toppings are if you enjoy tacos. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Most importantly, and as always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.